According to experts, in order to feed the world in 2050, we will need to produce the same amount of food as we had in the last 8,000 years combined. This really puts everything into perspective. At a time when 270 million people are on the brink of starvation, with conflict a major cause, compounded with climate extremes and exacerbated by COVID, this task has never been more dif difficult nor more urgent. So now you may ask, what is the solution? We are facing a huge challenge, especially now with the growth of the population, which comes with changes in consumption behavior. How do we ensure food production during this climate change crisis? The real secret is sustainable production. If we want to do it the correct way, we need to find a viable agricultural method which should use fewer fertilizers, less pesticides, and less water. It has to be sustainable, otherwise we will destroy our planet. Securing the food supply is one of the most important problems the world needs to solve right now. And this small country is proud to say it has become an unexpected food superpower and may hold some of the answers for how to deal with this global issue. So stick with us till the end to see how the Netherlands became the world's number two food export. Consider this. What if everyone on Earth would have the diet of an average American? This would require all habitable land to be used for agriculture. And we'd still be approximately 40% short on food. These numbers apply only to our current global population. Imagine the scenario when, by 2050, there will be two more billion people. That doesn't sound good, does it? Well, the key is efficiency. That's exactly how the were plant sciences managed to become a pillar in the sustainable agriculture sector. It was a very close collaboration between the government, scientific organizations, and industry. Everyone involved in the system was aligned and embraced innovation to achieve this shared goal and this pushed efficiency to a level unmatched anywhere else in the world. Let's take tomatoes for example, which gives us a great insight on how they produce food in a sustainable way. According to Ernst Vandenend, if you produce tomatoes on an open field in Spain, you will end up at the end of the harvest season with roughly 4 kilograms of tomatoes per square meter. Whereas when produces in a high-tech greenhouse in the Netherlands, you will have 80 kilograms per square meter, which is 20 times more. And the best part is that they use 4 times less water compared to the open field situation. This is a critical factor, because water is the greatest challenge we face. I assume you drink coffee. Do you know how much water has been used in order to produce that single cup of coffee? If you don't know, let me amaze you. Approximately 150 liters of water is used just for that coffee you had this morning. So it's understandable why cutting-edge technologies really offer the possibility of producing a large amount of food per square meter in a sustainable way. The Dutch led the world in tomato yield, using a fraction of the water used by other countries. But it's not just tomatoes. They are the largest producer of chilies, green peppers, and cucumbers in the world. Potatoes, onions, and carrots are ranked fifth. The list goes on and on, but the bottom line is that they were able to get much more out of so little. This is excellent news. Most people are aware that greenhouses allow growers to fine-tune every detail, but the Netherlands takes it to the next level. They perfected the greenhouse as an ideal environment for constantly testing and implementing all kinds of ways to optimize growth of their crops. From things as simple as testing what shades of LED lights can increase pest resistance and improve nutritional value, to things as crazy as moth-killing drones. As a result, they are currently not using any pesticides that can effectively kill moths. Moths eventually turn into caterpillars, which may cause significant harm to a variety of crops. And the drone has proven to be an invaluable tool in finding them. There is a constant drive to innovate in order to develop better and more effective farming systems. They even started to remove human touch entirely. Some of the most recent technologies rely on artificial intelligence (AI) to understand plant behavior and constantly modify conditions without any input from the farmer. They even have a department store where different air condition is being tested. Different sensors are used that they can actually measure the activity of the plants. Based on the activity of the plants, the computer actually controls the entire climate itself. The key to solving our global food challenge is not just relying on super-efficient food producers to carry the weight for everyone else, but learning and embracing this technology. Thanks to water recirculation, vertical farms can minimize water consumption by up to 90%. This is a significant improvement, since typical farms account for 70% of the world's water consumption. 
While new technology does paint a promising picture for the future, there are still a few question marks and drawbacks surrounding futuristic farming. LED technology is an advancement that allows for vertical farms in the first place. In comparison to conventional lighting, such as incandescent and fluorescent light bulbs, LEDs are more efficient, last longer, and emit less heat and ultraviolet radiation. However, LEDs need some energy. A research from 2021 stated that greenhouse growers typically use 15 to 20 times as much energy than outdoor farmers, whereas vertical farms in Arizona consume slightly more than 100 times as much energy. The truth is, indoor farms are unlikely to replace traditional agriculture anytime soon, with agriculture accounting for up to one-third of the greenhouse gas emissions and a major cause of deforestation and environmental degradation. Indoor vertical farming may be a viable solution. How do you think the future of farming will look like? Let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching. See you next time.